Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Toulon here at Bloomberg in New York, and welcome to Black in Focus. Today, we are so excited to be joined by Dean Anthony Wilbon. He's Dean of Howard University School of Business. Welcome, Dean. Hey, Karen. How are you? Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. So, um, um, Bloomberg Business Week um, just put out its most recent ranking of MBA programs globally. Um, and here in the United States, uh, Howard did really well um, in terms of ranking against its peer on key measures as such as networking, came in number five, learning, number 11, entrepreneurship, number 38, and even compensation at number 40. Um, but I want to start off talking with you about the COVID pandemic and how that might have impacted your students, especially students who identify as women, because women really have been particularly hard hit as they juggle work, home, family, um, frontline working. How has the pandemic kind of affected your campus and your students? Well, it's 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 had a tremendous impact. I mean, we we were uh, trying to figure out a way to navigate that uh, all of last year. I think we came out of it pretty well. Um, our students were impacted in a number of ways. Many through uh, the technology. Uh, we, we talk about, for example, the digital divide. Uh, what was uncovered through this process is that some of our students were lacking in the access to the technology needed to, to work in a virtual space. And so we had to supplement that by giving them uh, additional computers and, and computers that had the hardware that was going to allow them to do that. Uh, many of our students are coming from, from uh, low, low income backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so their safe haven is on campus. So when they had to actually work from home, um, the dynamic is totally different and not conducive to, to learning in many ways. And so we had to figure out ways to give them supplemental counseling support to address the, the, the fact that they're working from home. In some cases, they're doing their classes in, in, um, on, at kitchen tables with four or five other siblings sharing a network, uh, which created a whole different dynamic for them to, to learn. So we're, we're working through all that stuff. They're back on campus now. Uh, we're, we're getting them settled back in. And, and uh, I think we've come through it quite well, but we learned a lot through the process. You know, for the first time, the Business Week um, MBA program survey in the United States included a diversity measure looking at race, ethnicity, and also women representation. Um, why do you think that's important? Is it important to, to be in classrooms that are diverse? How does that impact the learning, the education, the understanding that students will then take out into the real world? Absolutely. I mean, the demographics of the country are changing, uh, of the world for that, uh, by that factor. Um, we, we have to make sure that the students have an exposure to a variety of, of uh, constructs that allow them to work in spaces that they're not necessarily comfortable in. So they need to know how to work together with people from different geographic areas, different genders, uh, different uh, sexual identities. And so we try to present that to them. It may not be in a uh, direct way, but make sure that they're exposed to the understanding of all diverse opinions can have an impact on the bottom line of a business. And so we fuse that into the understanding of all parts of the curriculum. So that gets us to the meat of what we want to talk about. What happens to um, Howard MBA students when they actually graduate? Howard, as you know, is called the Harvard of the, of the historically black colleges. Um, and since the racial reckoning and the murder of George Floyd, money has been entering into your school um, at, at, at a faster pace, perhaps than normal. Goldman has committed, I think, about $25 million to HBCUs um, and wants to double its hiring by 2025. I think around $10 million came from Bank of America. We could go on. Um, how would you describe corporate interest before and after uh, George Floyd? Well, I mean, again, the School of Business has always had a pretty good relationship with corporate America, and we've had very good success with placing our students. Um, since the social dynamics and, and, and injustice issues have cropped up, we've gotten a lot more of attention from people who may not have known about us or understood what we bring to the table. Uh, so we've received a lot of those major gifts as well. We received a $20 million gift from the Marriott Foundation to do a Center for Hospitality Leadership, uh, another $10 million from HPS to do a Center for Financial Excellence, um, all with the intent of trying to build the pipeline of our students into the corporate space, hopefully with a fast track to the C-suite. Um, so that recognition has come about mainly through the George Floyd uh, murder and all the other issues that we've dealt with. But it's we have we've had a long history, and I think it's just coming to the forefront now of company companies recognizing what we can bring to the table. 
And are, and in turn, are you asking more of the of the institutions to demonstrate or show that it isn't just let's get the students in, but as you mentioned, that pipeline, that fast track. We're giving yeah. you exceptional students in exchange. It isn't just about that job. It's about retention yeah. and promotion. I mean, we had a, a, a story we published about a year ago that showed uh, black employment in the financial services area at around 10 percent. But then you start looking at leadership. The numbers just the percentage you know plummets to to low single digits. What are you asking institutions to do differently? And and as a follow up, what are you doing differently yourself? And and your your numbers are spot on. I mean we had we see the same thing for example in hospitality at the low level operational jobs. You know sixty percent of those jobs are are minorities, and at the executive suites it may be three to five percent. And so we understand that dynamic needs to change, and companies know that they need to change it if they want to be successful. Um, we, we really take the idea of partnership with our corporate sponsors very seriously. And in that partnership, I believe we have a responsibility to not only share with them the wealth of our students, but also share with them our knowledge about what you can do to create an environment that's going to be welcoming to our students. Um, and so we work with our corporate sponsors. We bring them into the building. They have direct contact with our students throughout the entire year. It's not just a recruitment process, but they have to really dive into the classroom, understand what these students, uh, what their concerns might be, what their what their triggers might be. Um, and I think that helps them kind of build, go back to their, their environments and kind of help to build a culture that's going to welcome them, give them opportunities for advancement, allow them to, to, to be their true selves within that space without changing who they are. Um, all that's important. And I think that partnership uh, um, uh, relationship that we build is critical to that success. So what does that environment, if you can drill down a little bit, what does that environment look like at a, at a, at a company, whether it's in the hospitality space or in finance? Um, what, 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 do, what, what might be missing? So, you know, for example, we have a 21st century advantage program that we, we've had for a number of years. Um, and, and what it does is bring companies into our classrooms, work with our students. We, we, we give them a team of students, 10 to 15 students, and they work with them on, on mentoring, helping them understand uh, what it's like to be in the cor corporate culture, uh, helping them develop their skill sets around not only the hardcore technical skills they need, but the social skills that they need. And then I think within the companies, when we talk about retention, uh, how do you manage uh, people that are from, coming from diverse environments? How do you make sure they get the opportunities to, to grow and to, and to um, advance? Um, I think companies need to, you know, there, a lot of companies are building networks within themselves that, that look at, uh, you know, networks of African-American, networks of Asians, so that you can kind of build a subculture within the, the organization to give people opportunities to, to, to work with and, and engage with people that are like them or from places that they're from have the same cultural experiences. All that's important to just kind of create a comfort level. Um, mm -hmm. When I was coming through corporate America years ago, there was often cases when I was the only African-American and the youngest in some cases in a, mm -hmm. in a conference room. That can be very intimidating. Um, you you want to try to figure out a way to tamp that down for somebody so they can really contribute and feel that their voice is being heard. Um, and that intimidation factor doesn't uh, dissipate over time. Um, you know, it, it's, you mentioned, you know, retention, you know, and people have best intention. Goldman, I think, doubled its um, HBCU interns to 37 last year, but but hired only three, right? Um, and so th that's still that issue of following through. Um, are the are the students, are your students pursuing any areas of of education, any sort of specialization that you think is going to be particularly beneficial down the road? Um, we, the, the School of Business, we, we believe that it's important for them to have as many opportunities as possible <clears throat> and, and a variety of opportunities. We've been tracking students for many, many years into corporate jobs, but we believe that um, uh, our students have a variety of interests. Some are interested in nonprofits. Some are interested in starting their own businesses, entrepreneurship. Uh, some are looking at areas that we not necessarily have been focused on in recent years, sports mm -hmm. management, fashion. So there's a lot of different areas that students need to, uh, or companies need to understand that our students have an interest in. And so we're, we're trying to build that, that focus within the school and give students an option to consider all different types of, of alternatives that are not traditionally built into a, a, a business school as we know it. 
Um, you mentioned entrepreneurship. Uh, I do want to dive into that. Um, Howard was founded in 1867, just a couple of years after the Emancipation Proclama Proclamation that that uh, officially ended um, slavery. Um, I think your motto is excellence in truth and service. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, Howard came in at number 23 on the Bloomberg U.S. MBA school ranking. Do you think people would find that that number surprising? Maybe. I, I think that uh, there, there are a couple of different dynamics that fold into that number. Um, and I think we've touched on it a little bit when we when we talk about the comfort level of, of our people when they get into these these corporate structures. Um, one is that you find that a lot of folks who graduate from business school, uh, particularly Howard's business school, will go into a corporate um, organization and find that it's not for them. And they will immediately jump out and try to figure out a way to carve their own path through through their own business. Um, and our students are very adept at doing that, and they've been doing that for a number of years. And so you see a large number of, of Howard folks who have their own businesses and are very successful in doing that. And as a result of that, we've started emphasizing it more within the School of Business and across the university. Uh, we've created a an entrepreneurship concentration. Um, the university has an endowed chair of entrepreneurship who oversees a lot of the activities around the campus. The College of Engineering is doing stuff on innovation. So there's a lot of things happening that kind of breathe entrepreneurship into our students. So it's not surprising that that, that number is relatively high because they leave here with that kind of embedded in them, uh, mm -hmm. such that even after a couple of years of corporate, they may find a, an opportunity that they will jump on and they feel comfortable doing that and have the, the skill sets to do it. Um, you know, your expertise is in strategic technology management, uh, especially around small business, R&D, all of those those elements that are needed to to sustain and grow an organization. Um, why is it that entrepreneurship? It, it's historically has always been important, and we know from recent data that the the fastest growing segment of entrepreneurs, at least pre COVID, had been Black women, while not necessarily getting necessarily the funding at the same level. Um, what, what what's so special about entrepreneurship in the Black community? Well, I mean, there's a long, long history of, of entrepreneurship in the black community. Some of it is is um, uh, out of necessity. Um, if you go back historically, blacks have always had uh, their own businesses because they needed those those uh, those assets and, and products because they couldn't get them anywhere else. So all communities had some kind of corner store or or um, or you had to build some kind of service that would be supporting the black community. So it's a it's a long history. Mm -hmm. We've just kind of formalized it and try to put some some structure behind it so that we can ensure that there's some longevity to to the entrepreneurship process. So um, we're, we're, we're attached to that history very and very uh, cognizant of that history and trying to make sure we, we sustain it. Um, the, there's African-American businesses or small businesses in general are the engine of this country. Um, they, you know, the, the majority of the, the businesses in this country are less than 100 people, uh, like 90 percent of them. So uh, we can be part of that, that success and part of that pie. We just have to figure out a way to get ourselves into it. And, my, and much of it is around, as you, I think, suggested, funding, you know, yeah. finding, finding the funding in order to do it. And are you working with any financial institutions or any organizations to kind of, to kind of thread that needle between great idea, ambitious student, Absolutely. and the funding needed? Yeah. So we have a, the, the Howard University is, has the, um, Small Business Development Center. It's the District of Columbia Small Business Development Center that's funded by the Small Business Administration. We've had that for like 40 years, and it's housed right here in our building. So uh, we serve the, the immediate community in D.C. with consulting and access to loans to, through the banks and, and just opportunities and, and understanding about how to build a business plan. And our students have access to that center as well. So we're trying to, you know, we're using that as an, as an option. We're building a center uh, that's going to help focus some of the things around entrepreneurship. Um, there's a lot, of, as I mentioned, a lot of things on campus. We have these the endowed chair of entrepreneurship who's actually going to help us build out some other areas of, around that space. So yeah, we're we're threading that needle often. When do you think your 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 new center of entrepreneurship, that new program will be will be up and, and running? Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. We've been we've been working on it for quite a while. Um, hopefully we'll make an announcement soon. But we have so many other activities that we'll mm -hmm. fold into that, that it's going mm -hmm. to be something that's just going to be an umbrella to what we've been doing already already in the, on the campus. 
to pull everything under one umbrella. And then my yeah. final question to you, um, Gene Wilbon, is do you think that, that corporate America is is living up to its its promise to do more? Is it, it are we are you are you happy with the progress in, in just not in the interest in the hiring of, of your students, but also more importantly in the in the retention and promotion? Do you think that things are heading in in a in a positive direction, or is it just more of the same? I think it's I think it's heading in a positive direction. I I, I don't want to say that we're there yet. Um, there's still a lot to learn, and I think these companies are getting there. There's there are good intentions, um, and I think the George Floyd situation and other situations have kind of heightened the necessity to get more African Americans into certain spaces around the country, whether it's business. Uh, uh, social aspects, legal, uh, you know, you name it. Um, and so there's a lot, there's a lot left to, to work on. Uh, I'm happy that people are at least their eyes are opening to what uh, African Americans and other minority populations can bring to their bottom line. And they're, they're taking the steps to at least reach out and try to make something happen. So I'm hoping that there's a continued sustained approach in uh, making sure we can, we can fill these gaps and, and build these pipelines. Well, hopefully you'll come back and, and chat with us again in the spring because we'd love to hear more about your entrepreneurship efforts. And, and finally, we just wish you and, and all of your students well for the, for the academic year ahead. So that's Dean Wilbon of Howard University School of Business. Now, coming up next week, we have six-time Grammy, Grammy winner, trumpeter, jazz musician, and composer, Terrence Blanchard. He's gonna be joining us to talk about his new opera that's debuting at the Metropolitan Opera in New York. And that's significant because it's the first time that an opera by a black composer is being performed at the Met uh, in the, for the first time in its 130 plus year history. So we'll definitely see you for that 